very well. How are you all? Yes, so the top three characteristics of a servant leader, of course, need to be genuine. If you're not genuine in your service, you don't mean it. And people can tell whenever someone wants to do something and someone doesn't. You need to have a positive attitude. So whenever you're positive, like, it just radiates. And you can tell you're happy to be there. And then lastly, you need to be compassionate. As a servant leader, what you need to do is you need to be able to connect with people on all different levels, all different walks of life. And being able to empathize with others, that's something that comes with compassion. And that's the top three things. And I probably possess those. And I'm ready to talk to anyone. I can talk with my mouth closed. As crazy as that sounds. You guys want to hear? Okay. So I figured out I could do this. I love Pretty Little Liars. That's my favorite TV show. And Ashley Benson portrays Hannah. I was watching her audition tape for her to go on Pretty Little Liars. And the audition said, you know, how can I remember you? What, what's going to make me remember you the most? And she goes, I can talk with my mouth closed. So I sat in my room for 30 minutes, no lie. And I sat there, figured out how to do it. And then I went downstairs, told my mom. She was like, you're insane. What are you doing? But it's a great icebreaker. Everyone laughs, and it's unforgettable, of course. That's amazing. I would love to know more about your platform, um, sort of how it came to be, and what is your specific strategy? Yeah, so my platform is the color red, and I advocate for the importance of blood donation. So my health science teacher was the one who actually got me started and real made me realize that I'm so passionate about this. She was in my room one day, and we were about to have a blood drive at school. It was October of last year, the first time I had ever donated. And she was like, you know, you're going to save three people's lives. And I was like, what? I was like, I'm donating blood. And she said, yeah, each time you donate, you save three people's lives, up to. And I said, that's awesome. So she had talked to me more about it, and I was like, this is literally the greatest thing ever. Like, you are saving people's lives. You are a, literally a hero. So I hopped on with her, and she got me started with the American Red Cross, and now I'm the youth engagement lead for the state of Tennessee. On the Friday before I came down here, I got to visit the Tennessee Red Cross, and that's where they awarded me with my title, and I was able to work with closely with them. And I got to go down to the basement of the Tennessee Red Cross, and I got to see all of the blood packaging and how everything works. So with the color red, I've got to host my first blood drive on March, after, in April, excuse me, right after I was crowned through National Honor Society, where I serve as the chair member. And then on June 20th of this past summer, I was able to host my own blood drive. And this is at my church. And we collected enough blood to save over 108 people's lives. And that was all through prepping, planning. I've been working on hosting this since February. And being able to do that meant that we were saving people's lives, and I was creating community heroes. And I've gotten so many people to come out and donate by telling a story that I tell. And it's called Share Your Biscuits. So if I had a biscuit, and I could go to Hardee's and get a biscuit, and I had all the ingredients to make a biscuit, and you didn't have one, would you be mad at me if I didn't give you a biscuit? Yeah, you would. I'm sure you all would. So same way with blood. I have enough blood. I can make blood. I can get it restored. You didn't have blood, and you needed a life-saving blood transfusion. needles. They, everyone says they are afraid of needles. They're like, I can't donate. Like, it's terrifying. So I tell the share your biscuit story, and that always gets people. And for my drives, I actually show up with sausage biscuits. So after they donate, they can get a good sausage biscuit because, of course, if you give it both to them before, sausage will raise your blood pressure. So not too good before you donate blood, but after, that's great. And my peers are actually very willing to donate. In my high school, the majority of people who donate are 16 and 17-year-olds. With the American Red Cross, you can be 16 years old to donate. So all you have to do is get a parent permission slip, they sign it, and you can go donate. And it's great because they all come to school eager to donate. So I've really not had to deal more with that. It's mainly been people in their early 20s or early 30s that are like, oh, I can't miss work. Oh, I'm just afraid of needles. I can't come. So being able to tell that story and realizing that, hey, you're a community hero. You are important. Your blood is needed. That's something that makes everyone come out and donate. You said there's a big sister. 
So being able to go in and just talk to these kids and dance with them, play with them, do coloring sheets with them, it's been a thing that I'm a children's worship leader as well. So being able to connect with those children and being able to connect with the children in the hospitals, that preps me for each other. So I'm able to share the stories of the kids in the hospital with the kids in my children's church class, and that makes them realize how fortunate we are. And I realize how fortunate I am to be healthy and standing here today. Seeing the procedures that these kids go through and seeing how hard that they work to survive and seeing what they're working on and how they're overcoming so many things, it makes me realize I take so much in life for granted. I take walking for granted. I take breathing for granted. And being able to connect with them on that level and being able to see the difference that you can make in their lives just by walking in there and being like, hey, like I'm Taylor, nice to meet you. I'm here to be with you today. The smile on their faces is priceless, and that's a memory that you'll never forget, and it's a moment that you need to create, and Taylor, it's just been great. Do you think we should eradicate Confederate flags from monuments? I don't. I feel like we need to keep those just because that's part of history, and we need those to remember a time in our history that we don't need to go back to. We need those there to stand up for what we believe in, and we also need those there to also unify us as we're not going to go back to this, we're going to move forward from it. So that needs to be the end of something that we can move forward through. I just know that that's one thing we all need to look at in our school and a large school assembly. How do you relate to your students? So I'm a basketball player, a volleyball player, and a tennis player. I'm in all of the health science classes at my school. In December of this upcoming year, I'm going to be a certified CNA, 17 years old. Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> I think it's crazy. I also can't believe it. And I'm also a children's worship leader. So being able to connect with those kids on all different levels, I'm able to connect with the teachers as well. As I serve as vice president of student council, I'm working closely with the vice principal and the guidance counselor for my high school. I'm able to connect with many different people, even the boys, because I'm always willing to play a basketball game, always. This past Monday, whenever we went to Medieval Times and the main event, there were a bunch of boys playing basketball at main event, and my director was like, hey, I bet she can beat all of you. I went over there, and I won one game, but I lost three, but it's okay. <laughs> They've been playing all day. I mean, I was just warming up. <laughs> Yes, so as Miss America's Outstanding Teen, I can promote servant leadership. And through my platform, The Color Red, it works closely with Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. So I don't know if you all know this, but over 30% of donated blood goes to people with cancer because they can't take the effects that chemotherapy and radiation puts on them. But I'm ready for this job. I'm very well spoken. I'm able to connect with many different people, as I've told you all today. And I know that I'm able to fulfill anything. I'm a great planner. I'm able to set up so many different things. Just as Miss Tennessee's Outstanding Teen, I've been able to set up radio interviews. I've been able to go into schools, go into hospitals, and just make an impact on my state. And I'm ready to make that on this country. And I know I'm ready for this job. So uh, what do you think um, about the, the U.S.'s views on immigration? Uh, and also, what would you do if you were president, for example, to make changes to make life I feel like we need to go back to communication, face-to-face -face communication, because doing things through other people doesn't always work. And as we have border control and different things like that, that's something where I feel like as president, I would go down and I would speak to those people. Because we all know in relationships, we have to have communications, whether that be with mom, dad, brother, sister, boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And if we're not talking face to face, we're not going to get our message across. So if I was able to go down there and I was able to make things just a little bit better and be able to make their life a little bit easier on them, I would. And I feel like that starts with communication and that would be the first thing that I would do. What makes you a good friend? I'm very, very reliable. So if my friends tell me something, I don't forget it. So. <laughs> This past week, I've been rooming with Miss Pennsylvania, and neither of us like to wake up super early in the morning, so she's like, Taylor, please get me up, please get me up. I've had people not get me up before. So I've been able to wake her up, and I've just been very, like, she's kind of relied on me to get her up, and that's great because we can work with each other. But with my friends and stuff, I'm always there for them, and I'm ready to take on anything that they give me. A lot of my friends come to me for counseling just because I am the mom out of the group of my friends. So they're like, Taylor, what should I do? Or Taylor, how should I do this? And being able to just talk to them about that and relate to them and know that they're there, like I'm there to, for them to rely on, that's something that I'm great at. It 
It would be two minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I had a great time talking with you today.